Okay, so let's understand the stress strain curve for a typical stress strain curve for a method. Now, the part now we have you will see this diagram in your book. This diagram in your book. So what does this diagram tells us? So let's have an explanation of this diagram. Now before that, first we'll draw the y-axis and the x-axis. So this is the explanation of the diagram. This is y and this is x. Over here I have strain. This is my strain. And over here I have my stress. This is my stress. So for stress I'll plot in y-axis. For strain I'll plot in x-axis. Now it is said that for a small displacement of x, for a small displacement of x, stress is directly proportional to strain. So this says that uh, stress will be directly proportional to strain. So stress is equal to a constant k strain. This can be regarded as y and this can be regarded as kx. So, if you look at the chapter of geometry, what you will find that this is the equation of a straight line. This is the equation of a straight line. So, let's say from here to here, this is a small deformation. That is say delta x. So, we know that till this point, it will obey Hooke's law. This will obey Hooke's law. So, we know that this will be a straight curve. This will be a straight curve where stress and strain are always proportional that is they has a it has a fixed slope it has a fixed fixed slope please refer to the line and geometry videos where it will make you a bit more clearer so for now this is a straight line after that we increase the we increase the stress we increase the stress now we will have a deformation that is we will have a deformation we'll have a slight deformation why because after you cross x that is when x becomes greater it stops obeying hooke's law that is the elastic property that is the perfectly elastic property perfectly elastic property elastic property starts vanishing it starts vanishing the perfectly elastic property keeps on decreasing keeps on decreasing so beyond this point we know that it was perfectly elastic so even though if we make a small change of bell legs it will come back to its original position but after this point, after we increase the stress, there is a slight formation of deformation where it does not go back to its original position. Even though it's even though the deformation is small, even though the deformation is small, but still it does not go back beyond to its original position. That is after a certain amount of stress is present if we increase the stress if you increase the stress even though the prop the material is still elastic now please keep in mind even though the material is still elastic material is still elastic but still it is not completely elastic therefore there will be a slight deformation that will be present so that particular point where it stops being proportional it stops being proportional that point beyond that point it won't be perfectly proportional so beyond that point this point is known as proportional limit this point so in your diagram you will see that this point is written as proportionality limit or proportional limit so you can understand this from this particular explanation that is beyond this point it won't obey Hooke's law. So this is your proportional limit where stress is directly proportional to strain. Okay. Now after some time, that is after, this is your yield point. 
between this two between this two this is your yield point now if you talk about the yield point the even though the body still returns to its original dimension when the load is removed a region a b that is let's assume this to be a and b this to be a this to be b and this to be c so this is a place of yield point so let's understand what does this yield point tells us even though stress and strain are not proportional now you can say that stress and strain are not proportional this is a point this is the ill point now i have said that it has stopped obeying hooke's law it has stopped obeying hooke's law even though it has stopped obeying hooke's law but the as i mentioned earlier but it's still elastic it's still elastic so the amount of stress that you produce the strain is a bit more that is it is no longer proportional but still the body will return back to its position that is it will return back to its original position and that point is known as yield point that point is known as yield point and this yield point is from a till c let me magnify this curve this point this point from a to c b is a point in my yield point that is this curve is a yield point so even though now what does yield point tells us yield point tells us that even though the stress and strain are not proportional but still the material will be elastic in this particular region so if you remove the stress if you remove the stress remove it then the body will come back to its original position so this is known as the yield point this is known as the yield point that is the region from a to b now this is also known as this is also known as what does this also known as this is known as elastic limit elastic limit now why does we call this as elastic limit the reason why we call this as elastic limit is that now if you go beyond this point if you go beyond this point that is the yield point if you go beyond this point you will see that the object after getting deformed does not come back to its original position so till here you can stretch your string till here you can stretch your string even though it from a to c it will not obey hooke's law but you can see that it will still come back to its original position so this is known as yield point and this point is known as elastic limit after that it will no longer be perfectly elastic so the point c in your diagram is known as elastic limit now from c to d from c to d if you increase the load if the load is increased further you can see that the stress develop exceeds the yield strength that is this is your yield strength this is a yield strength so and this is corresponded by del y so stress that is experience is your del y that is a yield strength at this point so if you increase the load further as i have mentioned the strain now keep in mind the strain even though you increase a small amount of stress the strain is rapidly increasing see the strain is rapidly increasing for this amount and this amount even though height is less even though the height for this two is less but there is a rapid increase in strain there is a rapid increase in strain this length and a small length this this is a small increase in length of stress but this is a huge increase in length of strain so beyond the elastic limit the strain increases rapidly so this point signifies the rapid increase of strain that is from c to d and this is known as this is known as a point this is known as your ultimate tensile strength this is known as ultimate tensile strength d is known as ultimate tensile strength now i have this with the color blue ultimate tensile strength 
so the point d is known as ultimate tensile strength so let me clear this for you i hope it is clear now why is the point d known as the ultimate tensile strength so if you go beyond this point now even though it's not following hooke's law even though there is a huge increase in strain that is the huge increase in strain regarding to stress but still till this point d till this point d the material the material does not break does not this doesn't break it does not break till this point till this point d it does not break and therefore it is known as ultimate tensile strength ultimate tensile strength of a material is given by the point d now beyond this point additional strain is produced even a by a reduced applied force now beyond this beyond this even if you apply a small stress a small reduced stress or a small force the result is the breakdown of the material the result is the breakdown of the material there therefore a fracture occurs therefore you can say that a fracture has occurred and this is known as your fracture point this is known as your fracture point so beyond the point d if you keep on increasing the stress you will reach a point where you have reached the fracture point and the material starts on breaking this is known as your fracture point so in this way we can understand the curve that has been given now let me have a quick recap the point d on the graph is the ultimate tensile strength this is the ultimate tensile strength now beyond this point the additional strain is produced even by a reduced applied force and fracture occurs at point e even for a small applied force even for a small applied force additional strain is being applied additional strain is being applied and from point d to point e if you push the material from point d to point e which is a fracture point the material will start breaking if the ultimate strength and fracture point d and e are close if the ultimate point d and e say suppose for a different material if the curve was something like this this is d and this is e that is if we apply a force and because of this force because of a small amount of force that we apply if the force is increased many times that is if the displacement is increased many times this point this is the ultimate tensile strength this is the ultimate tensile strength and if the fracture point are very close by that is it easily breaks it easily breaks that is it is brittle it is brittle we say that the object is brittle so if d and e are very close that means the fracture point where the material starts breaking and d that is the ultimate tensile strength where after that if you apply a small force a huge amount of displacement occurs if this two point are very close by by close by i mean that if you have arrived at ultimate tensile strength that is beyond this point the material will have a huge amount of stress that is a huge amount of stress stress even though a small force is applied and a fracture point after just applying force you reach you reach at the fracture point you reach at the fracture point that is what that is d and e will have a minimum distance so that type of substances is known as they are brittle for example if you take the example of glass now if i keep on pressing a glass it will reach a point where for a small amount of stress the strain is huge and just by arriving at that point the glass breaks so what we can see that we know that glass are brittle glasses are brittle 
So that is the reason when the condition arrives where if you apply a small force, a huge displacement occurs and as soon as that there is a breakdown of the material, they are known as brittle and we can understand this by the following diagram. So this is the relation between stress, strain, curve. 